Hi everyone, happy Friday. Uh, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about insulin resistance and exercise. Um, I haven't been on uh, Facebook Lives in a while because as many of you maybe know, um, I've had a I had my baby. <laughs> yeah, baby Eliana was born April 1st and we're doing well. Um, I'm learning every day something new with her, which is really fun, exciting, and can be stressful. I'm sure some of you know the experience of this. And um, I talked a little bit about my fertility journey on the Facebook group a few, I think now months ago or weeks ago. I can't even remember. Time has kind of slipped out of my atmosphere and world. <laughs> um, but on um, YouTube, there should be some links about that, about my pregnancy. And if you go back on the video section, you'll actually see the videos that I did about it if you want to learn a little bit about my fertility journey. So today I wanted to talk a little bit of insulin resistance and exercise. Um, here I live in um, Toronto and um, you know where we live right now, the weather's warming up. So uh, a lot of people are thinking about what they can do about getting their bodies moving more so now. And also the gyms opened up uh, a few weeks ago. Um, so everybody's kind of thinking about what they should kind of get into again. Um, I know I'm also thinking about it as well, being in postpartum um, and how I can support my insulin resistance. So I thought it would be a good topic to come on here and talk a little bit about what you can do and what makes sense in terms of insulin resistance and PCOS and exercise. So first things first, in the research, there is actually quite a few articles now um, talking a little bit about what exercises are best when we're talking about metabolic uh, related issues like PCOS. And when I say metabolic related issues, I mean um, issues with insulin and glucose. And so we know insulin resistance is a really big cause of uh, PCOS for many women. And so when we're talking about what we can do about insulin resistance, exercise is a huge component of that and diet and lifestyle, right? And when we say diet, or sorry, when we say lifestyle, exercise is a huge component of that, along with sleep and stress and digestion. But um, exercise and diet is a huge component of treating PCOS, especially in my practice. And oftentimes we're figuring out, okay, what, how, what can we do to get this person's body moving so that the insulin and glucose can work properly, glucose can get into the cell so that we can use it as energy. First things first, um, there's lots of... Um, so the type of exercise, let's talk about that. <clears throat> There's lots of um, studies now talking about high intensity interval training and how this exercise can be really helpful for insulin resistance, which it can be because what's happening is we're really using our muscles, we're getting our heart rate up and that's bringing that glucose inside the cell and making the cell more sensitive to insulin instead of on the other hand, more resistant to insulin. And if we back it up a little bit, insulin's job is to um, bring that glucose inside the cell so that we can use it as energy. And it gets created only when well, glucose is in the bloodstream. And so when we eat things like carbohydrates and sugars, um, glucose gets absorbed into the bloodstream. And that's when insulin gets created to bring that glucose inside the cell. What happens in PCOS is the cell becomes resistant and so now glucose sticks around inside the bloodstream instead of coming inside the cell and now we have high blood sugar. So now on lab work, we're going to see high fasting glucose. We're going to see high fasting or high, sorry, HbA1c. And eventually, if we keep going that way, it can eventually end up in insulin resistance. It can eventually end up in... Um, diabetes or prediabetes. And then the other thing is when we have higher levels of insulin, it can increase testosterone and that can cause issues in terms of ovulation and impact our, um, our ovaries. So, you know, getting that glucose inside the cell is extremely important. So exercise, the type of exercise. So high intensity inter interval training has been studied, cardiovascular or cardio training has also been studied. Um, even just walking is a huge one, especially when it comes to insulin resistance. They actually did a study where they, um, you know, looked at, does it make sense to, you know, walk for 30 minutes at the end of the day or walk for 10 minutes after each meal? And what they found was walking after uh, each meal for 10 minutes actually helped the insulin resistance more so than walking 30 minutes at the end of the day, which makes sense because you just ate a bunch of glucose 
your blood sugar is gonna rise and we, if we get those muscles working we can actually get the insulin to bind to those receptor sites to bring that in glucose inside the cell so really important if you have like 10 minutes after each meal to just go for a walk around the block and then come sit back down i think that can be really helpful so high intensity interval training walking any type of cardio anything that can get your body moving and your heart rate up can really help those muscles get that glucose inside the cell <clears throat> and then um, strength training so using um, weights can actually be really helpful and the reason why is because when we strengthen our muscles and we use our muscles especially our leg muscles these are the most important muscles when it comes to insulin resistance um, and when we use those muscles it actually helps pump uh, the pumping action again helps to get that glucose inside the cell um, thank you Brooke for joining and uh, good morning <laughs> and so the thing is when we when we're doing exercises with weight training or with you know light weight uh, working our glutes and our uh, thighs all of those muscles can really help insulin resistance um, one of the exercises that even a personal trainer has kind of talked about with me which makes total sense is deadlifts so doing deadlifts because they actually uh, work a lot of our big muscle groups our glutes our legs our lower back things like that but even just squats and lunges like even if you had uh, five pound weights and you were doing you know 10 minutes of um weight training and then a little bit of cardio like that could be really helpful it is a little bit different when we're talking about patients who are overweight versus patients who are are more on the leaner side when we're talking about bmi um you know if we're trying to like really lose weight with pcos um you know doing a little bit more cardio and then you know, balancing out that with strength training can be really helpful so i would say more cardio a little bit of strength training if it's lean pcos more strength training and a little bit less cardio because we we do want to you know build more muscle in that circumstance or just use more weights because we're not trying to lose weight in that circumstance um and it can actually be worse losing weight in in lean pcos so the so the type of exercise and then also um the intensity so in terms of intensity you don't want to go too high in terms of exercise you want to kind of watch what your body is telling you and be a little bit more intuitive as to like how you're feeling after the exercise if the exercise is too strenuous and you're finding that you're tired after the exercise it's too much and you need to um, tone it back so a lot of women in my practice try high intensity interval training um so hit training and they find that it's too much for them or they're not seeing the results they're saying oh you know i'm not losing weight and because it, the intensity is too high so we actually scale it back and we bring them to just walking and yoga and they actually start to lose weight so it's really important to really be mindful and not just listen to you know the people at the gym or the personal trainer is telling you to push harder and push harder and push harder if you can't and you're feeling exhausted and you're feeling really bad after that exercise don't do it <laughs> bring it back and find an exercise that you actually feel good about after the exercise you should be able to like do everything you can you, you don't need to you wouldn't have to like kind of come home and sit down on the couch and feel really tired that means that's too much at that point so we talked about the type of exercise we talked about the intensity um and then the type of exercise or sorry the the amount of time so typically you know gold standard is make sure you get your body moving 150 minutes a week um and you know it really actually doesn't necessarily depend on the type of exercise if you're just starting out i would honestly just do anything that you feel is comfortable and that you have fun doing because if you don't have fun doing it, you're not going to want to do it and it's not going to be sustainable. So find something that you actually enjoy doing and stick to that because that's what's really going to help you to be more sustainable or help it to be more sustainable long term. So 150 minutes a week, you know, um, divide that into how many times you can work out in that week. If it's every day, great. If it's, you know, um, if it's not every day, great. <laughs> it doesn't really matter as long as you're moving your body and getting your um, muscles moving and your um, heart rate up. This can be really, really helpful for PCOS. And um, 
you know, at the end of the day, um, exercise is extremely important with PCOS. However, I would say diet comes first um, before we even get to exercise because you could be exercising all you want, but if you're not eating well and you're not eating a well-balanced diet in terms of high fat, high protein, um, you know, car a little bit of carbohydrates um, and uh, what am I missing here? Oh, and vegetables, of course. <laughs> um, the exercise won't really do much for you if you're just exercising and not eating the best. Because again, if you're pumping in glucose in there, your body still has to work really well to like get those cells more sensitized to insulin. So diet is number one, if you can. Getting your body moving is second. And kind of following the, the things we kind of talked about, the type of exercise, the intensity, um, the, t uh, the time in terms of how long you should be exercising for is really important uh, when you're kind of coming up with what you should do. And what I would suggest is actually like setting, a set t setting aside time inside your schedule, giving yourself a reminder like, okay, Mondays at 5 p.m. when I get home from work, I'm going to do 30 minutes or I'm going to do 20 minutes or I'm going to do 10 minutes or even in between meetings if you have weights right beside you. I used to do that. Um, when I was working, uh, I would just have weights right beside me and like do some, just a little bit of weights like in between patients just to get um, my mind, you know, more focused. It was helping with me with that. Obviously, um, we're not breaking a sweat here, <laughs> uh, but it's still really helpful just to like get those muscles working and pumping because that's what's really going to help sensitize those cells to insulin. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions at all about exercise and insulin resistance and PCOS, please drop them in the comments below. Um, I will be checking the comments and seeing if I can be of help to any of you. And stay tuned for our next Facebook Live. Hopefully I can do one next week as well. Take care, guys. Bye.